Anyway, when it came to planning my wedding, I had one goal in mind, to have a national treasure extravaganza. Oh, yes. <laughs> Coming up next on the Texas Wedding Show, Bridal Bloops Edition. The alpacas. They're so soft. They stole the Declaration of Independence. I'm going to steal the Declaration of Independence. Oh, that's, that's the line. Yeah. You got it. Dang it. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> wow. You win again. There's puns, right? Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's puns. You don't know any puns. I also had this brilliant idea to surprise everyone with a Nicolas Cage impersonator. Oh, yeah. <laughs> If you have any alpaca puns, please email them too. <laughs> she needs more alpaca puns. Help her out. But mm. I'm sure alpaca punch. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Texas Wedding Show, Bridal Bloopers. With bourbon. With bourbon. <laughs> I'm Brittany, and this is my brother, Jordan, and together we are Ladybird Studios, a DFW and Austin-based wedding photography and videography studio. And you're looking very fancy today. Yes, I am. Making me look bad over here. we got well, shorts on. That's what little t-shirt. sisters are for. Fair <laughs> enough. I wanted to get dressed up for the wedding story. Well, uh, you told me that, it's, that we've got a historical story today, right? Yes. So... I chose a historic bourbon. Yes. So this is Old Forester 1920 Prohibition style. So what's cool about this is Old Forester was one of, I, I believe, six distilleries that was allowed to operate during the Prohibition for medicinal use. Ah, okay. Yes, because, uh, you know, you need your whiskey for your headaches and yes. whatnot. Calm your nerves. That's right. So this was done in the style of how they did it back in the prohibition. Cool. So they actually put it in the bottle at 115 proof back then. And so uh, this uh, probably came out at a higher proof and they add a little bit of water to it to get it down to 115 proof. Cause old foresters like barrel proof stuff ends up coming out super hot, like 128 plus proof. Um, but this is a very delicious bourbon. One of my, like go to um, for like higher proof stuff because you can find it anywhere that sells whiskey. As you can tell by the amount left in this bottle. Yeah. I really enjoy this one. So so for people who don't know, can you explain proof? Because. Oh, yeah. So it's just it, the alcohol content divided by or sorry, multiplied by two. Yeah. So like normally like. So it has to be 80 proof to be considered whiskey. So like your like Jack Daniels and like that level, like the Maker's Mark and stuff. Those are 80 proof. Like they're as low as it can be and still be whiskey. Okay. Still be bourbon. 115 is pretty hot. 115 is pretty hot. You know, most people are not used to drinking anything above like 95 or so, like maybe a hundred for like your bonded products, but 115, yeah, it's pretty hot. But this is a really delicious one. And it doesn't drink as hot, as high proof as it actually is. Uh, because it's beautifully made. Look at the color on that thing. It is pretty. That's pretty. That's a party color. Well, cheers. cheers. To history. <laughs> mm, and to the end of the prohibition. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. That's nice. It's like caramel and banana. I was going to say caramel. <laughs> banana, right? You, you taste Hold banana? There's, there's so much banana in it. But the caramel's... That's why I wore the yellow. Oh, see? Mm -hmm. yeah. There you go. Well, that's why I wore the shorts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdo. You got a story for us? I do. It's a good one. All right. <clears throat> Whew, this is from um, this is from a bride. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gents, I'm writing to tell you about the most treasured wedding of all time. My wedding, of course. Treasured. <laughs> this so is the, the key word. She uh, she italicized treasured. Okay. 
So the time has come to finally start planning my wedding, something every little girl dreams of, right? You know me. I've always been a bit extra. And I this, don't know you. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't have any idea who you are. Uh, but okay. I appreciate you thinking that we do. <laughs> you know me. I've always been a bit extra, and this time was no exception. But I mean, who doesn't want their wedding to be the talk of the town? Heck. The nation, am I right? Oh, God. Is she, uh, <laughs> Do you know where this she, is going? No, I have no idea, but okay. I'm just thinking like this is a this is like an Instagram model. Yeah, right. Like a an influencer. Yeah. Yeah. For she sure. she assumes we know her. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Okay. Now <laughs> my obsession with all things Nicolas Cage was no secret to anyone. I had a face plastered all over my room for years, and I even named my cat Ghost Rider in honor of the man himself. All right, I like her more than I thought of <laughs> I mean, who can resist Nicolas Cage's rugged charm and those ridiculous one-liners? Not me, that's for sure. Anyway, when it came to planning my wedding, I had one goal in mind. To have a national treasure extravaganza. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm honestly, like, a little jealous that... I don't get to claim this for my own, you know? They stole the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> I'm going to steal the Declaration of Independence. Oh, that's, that's the line. Yeah. You got it. Dang it. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> wow. You win again. You're not a true Nicolas Cage fan. Apparently not. Okay. That is good. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's okay. real good. Uh, the ceremony was held at this beautiful old mansion with hidden compartments and secret passageways. Ooh. I know. I would love to have been a guest. Yeah. I wanted my guests to feel like they were on a treasure hunt, just like in the movie. So I had these little maps made, complete with riddles and clues, leading them to hidden treasures throughout the venue. <laughs> I also had this brilliant idea to surprise everyone with a Nicolas Cage impersonator. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, mean, I hope it was a good one. I mean, how cool would it be to have a fake Cage crash my wedding? Yeah. I hired this guy t uh, who looked like somewhat like him, and I was just praying that he'd pull it off. The ceremony uh, went smoothly with guests excitedly following the treasure hunt clues. Suddenly, I heard whispers and gasps in the crowd. I turned around, and there he was. <laughs> the fake Nicolas Cage, um, striding into the mansion like he owned the place, <laughs> as Nicolas Cage would. Yes, he would. I couldn't help myself. I darted towards him, trying to contain my laughter and excitement. I flung my arms around the fake cage, and the crowd erupted with laughter and applause. It was a mix of shock, amusement, and a whole lot of, what the heck is happening? <laughs> <laughs> That'd probably be me. <laughs> yeah. Like, you just got married, and now you're just, like, running and throwing yourself at this man. Yeah. But, I mean, I yeah. get it. I get it. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole theme of the wedding. Yeah, so. right? Does Nick Cage get the, if get the girl in the end? <laughs> <laughs> Lot twist. <laughs> um, he, he comes in, I object. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you're a guest of this wedding and you haven't, you obviously know it's going to be a, a National Treasure themed wedding and you haven't gone into it re-watching National Treasure. Yeah, that's a fail as a wedding if guest. That's a fail. Sure. Yeah. It's like yeah. I do with any sequel. Like, you know. Oh, yeah. Especially or like one of the Marvel movies. I'll even go all out and like plan in advance and mm -hmm. like I might watch marathon. the whole thing again. Yeah. 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 You can't go wrong with the Marvel marathon. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Fake Cage grabbed the microphone and in his best Nicolas Cage voice congratulated us on our special day. He even tried to throw in a few of those classic national treasure lines, but let's just say they weren't quite as smooth as the original. I mean, it's Nicolas Cage. Yeah. So, nevertheless, it had everyone in stitches. Uh, we danced and party the night away with Fake Cage leading the cha cha slide like a champ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but wait, there's more. My amazing groom had a prank up his sleeve, and boy, did he deliver. Just as I was swooning over Fake Cage's hilarious antics, my groom snuck up behind me and whispered, Hey, honey, it's time for our grand escape. Before I knew it, he had whipped out a mini smoke machine from his pocket and released a puff of smoke right in front of us. The crowd gasped and erupted into laughter as we disappeared behind the smoke screen, like a couple of cheesy action heroes in our <laughs> own National Treasure sequel. He's like a ninja. Yeah. <laughs> and we burst through the door, back through the doors, smoke billow billowing around us, and made our grand re-entrance with the fake cage leading the way. 
The crowd went wild, cheering and laughing, as we reemerged as the triumphant treasure hunting couple taking our bows. Oh, man. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. These people are great. Mm -hmm. We waved our final goodbyes, and Nick let us back out to the getaway car. I mean, talk about a grand exit. Honestly, seriously, that is that's the alternative to the sparklers right there. Like, yeah, just have Nick Cage, uh, <laughs> you know, help you explode a little, uh, a little ninja smoke. Yeah, Batman smoke or don't something. Don't even, yeah, you don't even need to say goodbye. Just the smoke, and you're out. And yeah. your guests are just like, all right, cool. That would be awesome, actually. Honestly, like you actually leave that way. Yeah, just sneak away. Yeah, and then you don't have people like, wait, I have to talk to you. You know, just right. yeah, peace out. Yeah. And we're going on the honeymoon. Man, these are cool people. Yeah, right? I wanted to be at that wedding. <laughs> Me too. Just do the treasure hunt. Yeah. <sighs> Looking back, it was the most ridiculously hilarious wedding I could have ever imagined. I had a Nicolas Cage impersonator crash my national treasure themed celebration, and my groom pulled off an epic <laughs> disappearing act. Some people might say I'm crazy, but my husband says I'm a national treasure. Oh. <laughs> Well done. Yeah. That was like great. That. Yeah. Wow. I love it. So yeah. not super, not a super crazy. Nothing went wrong, but yeah. pretty cool. Those are really cool people. Yeah. See, the reason I went, you'll find out real quick why I went, I assume from those first lines that they were an Instagram influencer, but they were just more like planning an epic wedding and like people are going to hear about this. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Okay. Um, do you want another story? Mm. You're talking about your story? Or my story. Oh, I thought you were talking about my story. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> no, I don't want to hear it. Let's go. All right. We're so done. this is a wedding planner who submitted the story. Okay. Um, a pretty high-end wedding planner, actually. Okay. So, so I was overseeing the arrangements for the nuptials of this high-profile couple, Chloe and Dan. In parentheses, she says, I have to change their names because we had an NDA, oh. non-disclosure agreement. So we'll call them Chloe and Dan. Chloe was an Instagram influencer. That's why I went there. I was like, did we both choose Instagram <laughs> influencers? <laughs> um, and Dan was an eccentric tech millionaire. Uh, they wanted an eco, uh, she put this in quotes, eco-friendly vintage extravaganza. Chloe's words. Not mine, the planner says. So the venue was a quaint vineyard, complete with a rustic barn for the reception. Everything was going to plan. The organic farm-to-table menu was ready. The recycled paper invitations had been sent out. And the 100% sustainable bamboo decor was en route. Or so I thought. The day of the wedding, I get a call from the decor vendor. Their truck had broken down halfway and the bamboo de decorations were stranded. Not ideal, right? But that was just the opening act. While I'm panicking about the decorations, the wedding cake, a towering masterpiece designed to look like an Amazon rainforest, arrives. The delivery guy somehow misjudges the entrance and trips and the cake, imagine the horror, goes flying into the gravel driveway. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's no saving it it's going into the gravel seriously in that moment my heart sank faster than the cake had fallen <laughs> uh, i love the analogy way to go planner <laughs> uh, i always like am nervous whenever i see a big cake moving around there's never I, uh, no i don't know um uh, this is why people should just have fake cakes. Yep. <laughs> Cupcakes or donuts or... Serve the sheet cake in the back and mm -hmm. don't let people know and just have like... They sell those big styrofoam cakes right. now, you know? Yeah. Sorry if you're a cake decorator and I just tried to <laughs> pitch the end of your business. No offense. But not all cakes should go... Some of these cakes are amazing. Like those people who make the cakes to look like something special. Like there's this amazing... Um, cake artist and I call her cake artist more than a baker in Austin. She can do anything. I mean, well, she did the one um, with the cat and cat's butt sticking out that we did in the oh, wedding. Oh, the corgi. It was yeah, a yeah, corgi butt. Oh, it was corgi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she did like that a, was so cool. Yeah. She did Bevo one time, the Longhorns mascot. Uh -huh. Like, and 
he was Bevo, like standing up vertically. And it was red velvet cake inside. So you cut it open and it's red cake. I've seen that. Gross. Uh, she, she did. I mean, she's done so many things. It's incredible. Anyways, sorry to bash the cake people, but this stuff happens. It's scary. It is scary. I feel for them. Yeah. Uh, okay. So as I'm trying, trying to salvage what's left of the cake with the baker, the florist arrives with the bouquets and centerpieces. Unfortunately, they had a mix-up on our order with another one. So instead of wildflowers... Not another (laughs) (laughs) mix-up. Chloe and Dan... So instead of the wildflowers that Chloe and Dan had specifically requested, I was staring at an array of exotic flowers that had likely never seen anything resembling eco-friendliness. Oh, no. Just when I think it can't possibly get worse, the alpacas arrive. The alpacas... Yeah, alpacas yeah, are like, yeah, they're yeah. becoming a thing at weddings. They are. It's so bizarre. I don't understand it at all. I love it. I think it's cool. It's just like unique. It's very unique. But like, how did that become a thing? Isn't In case you don't know, this is a thing now. This is not a rare thing for alpacas to show up at weddings. Alpacas fact, and like mules. Yeah, a lot of times actually at the wedding venue, it's like the wedding venue has alpacas. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to bring in an alpaca vendor. They're already there. They're so soft. They're very soft. And they're like, it's usually like a white alpaca and a black alpaca. And they're yeah. dressed like a bride and a groom. And yeah. I mean, there's like. They're friendly. There's puns, right? Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's puns. You don't know any puns. I do. I was going to say, uh, I was going to say. But it doesn't really have to do with weddings. When it comes to life, I'll pack a punch. Wow. (laughs) That was punny. Very punny. Thank you. Yes. Okay. (laughs) So, you see, Chloe and Dan wanted alpacas at their wedding for the guests to pet and take pictures with. Very vintage, very Instagram. However, what was supposed to be a serene, family-friendly scene quickly turned into... A chase sequence right out of the slapstick comedy when one of the alpacas escaped and started galloping through the vineyard. No. <laughs> hey, alpacas going to do what alpacas going to do, you know? Yeah. They are wild animals. At this point, I've lost count of how many disasters have struck. I'm running on pure adrenaline, rounding up rogue alpacas, <laughs> substituting exotic flowers for local blooms, and somehow piecing together a semi-decent cake from the wreckage. How? I really wonder. How? Yeah. No. Maybe they, like, I wonder how it fell. Like, you know, because I'm just imagining it falling this way. Yeah. I mean, know? that's the like, only way to fall. I mean, it could fall, like, they could have, it could have. Like the tops of it have come off. Like if you if it yeah. fell like with its base down and it's just the tops oh, of it. Yeah. Maybe you had some extra icing so we could touch it up. I don't know. But I'm just she talks about it going into the gravel. Yeah. Like, okay. Anyways. Um somehow by the time the guests start arriving, everything is miraculously back in order. Well, almost everything. The bamboo decor was replaced by creatively twisted grapevines from the vineyard. The cake, a more min- minimalist version of the original. Well, eco-friendly. With a, few, with a few tire marks added for character. Oh, gosh. I'm sure that's a joke. <laughs> yeah. The flowers, a unique exclusive collection. <laughs> and the alpacas, happily munching on grapes in a securely fenced part of the vineyard. <laughs> <laughs> alpacas eat grapes? I guess they probably eat anything, huh? Can they? I mean, alpacas going to do what alpacas going to do. <laughs> It's probably fine. <laughs> Don't feed your dogs grapes, people. Well, alpacas. They I'm get, sure they're different. They're, they're different. Yeah, yeah. But. And believe it or not, the wedding was a hit. The couple was delighted with the creative twists. <laughs> well, that's awesome. And the guests loved the unique, unexpected elements. The Instagram posts were flooding in, and my phone was blowing up with inquiries for unexpectedly vintage eco-friendly weddings okay so there you have it what a niche a day in the life of a wedding planner full of surprises quick thinking and an absurd amount of stress and who can forget the alpacas definitely not me it worked out for yeah that's awesome you know that's the amazing thing about some wedding planners is you know 
they can take all these ridiculous circumstances that arise and somehow make it work. They'll they'll run with the owl. No, no. I was trying to come up with another alpaca pun. <laughs> See, I told you there's not really alpaca puns. I mean, you had the one. Yeah, it was a good one. Well. I was a good wedding planner, though. Yeah, run, rolling with the punches. And it worked out for her. Yeah. She got, you know, she, she actually got an inf- uh, a, a good Instagram influencer because I always hear, like, different friends will say, um, and I've had a couple of times this happened where someone will say, can you give us a discount on the wedding? Because oh. I've got a ton of Instagram followers. Right. I'm always like, no. So it's like, so I'm doing you a favor. Right. Right. Yeah. It's like, sorry, your Instagram followers don't pay the bills. But in this case, she was probably a super, super influencer. She married the tech millionaire and it worked out in the planner's uh, you know, favor. favor here for her to be able to get a bunch of weddings yeah. that were unexpectedly vintage eco-friendly weddings Mm -hmm. that's a mouthful i wonder if she puts that on her website now unexpectedly (laughs) vintage vintage eco-friendly weddings weddings. yes that's 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 a very specific market yep that's her specialty now wow yep you never know what's gonna what people are gonna come up with next these days but Mm. i'm sure (sighs) i'll pack a punch (laughs) <laughs> there's probably more alpaca puns out there if you have any alpaca puns please email them too <laughs> she needs more alpaca puns help her out yeah no but for real thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this episode uh if you do have any crazy stories or ideas for our next episode please email them to info at ladybirdstudios.com uh, leave us a comment, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and click on the next video. Do it. Until next time. Bye.